developers, which means I kind of coordinate all of our uh, developers and all the people who build and stuff that you're about to see. Um, I'm Scottish, so I have an accent that's quite thick, um, which means that a lot of Americans can't even understand me. So if you can't understand what I'm saying, please, please, please just let me know, and I'll be happy to say it again. I apologize for the fact that my, my thick accent. Um, I, sorry? <laughs> Slowly, okay. Yeah. I'm slowly. <laughs> I, that's, that's great advice. I think. Um, so I thought I would give you some background and some introduction as to what this universe was, uh, is, and where we've come from, and where we are today, and, and why that's interesting and exciting for education and for you guys. And so this universe really started with this thing here. This is a telescope called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey Telescope. It's a, an amazing piece of equipment. It's basically an automatic camera that takes photographs of the sky every couple of minutes. And so it's completely automated. People sit there and keep an eye on it, make sure it's working okay. But it basically just sits there and takes photograph after photograph after photograph of the night sky. And that's fantastic, but it means that we end up with millions and millions and millions of photographs of the night sky. Um, particularly, what we have are millions of images of these things. Uh, these are galaxies. So large collections of stars and dust and gas in space. Um, and we have the Sloan Telescope took about a million photographs of a million different galaxies out there in space. And so as an astronomer, you want to know um, as much as you can about these galaxies. You want to understand how they formed, how they're changing over time, um, the properties of the stars and the galaxy, um, the age of the galaxy, for example. And you do that by just looking at these images and, and, and understanding these images. One of the things you can do is get computers to tell you some of that data for you. So you can tell a computer, here's a million images of galaxies. For every single one, tell me how bright the galaxy is. Um, for every single one, tell me what color the galaxy is. Is it more blue, is it more red? Um, for every single one, tell me where the galaxy was in the next sky. And computers are great at doing that kind of thing, being able to, to automate um, analyses like that. But if you ask a computer, what shape is this galaxy? It really finds it hard to do. If you ask a computer, is this galaxy more spirally than this galaxy here? It'll be like, what do you mean by spirally? It's a hard question, right? It's very hard to get a computer to automate that kind of task. Um, and that's a real problem. Um, but people are quite good at it. So these are two galaxies here. One is called the spiral galaxy, and one is called an elliptical galaxy. So we'll see if you guys can spot which one's which. Who thinks that this one is the spiral galaxy? Yeah? Lots of nods. Who thinks it's an elliptical galaxy? Who thinks this one's a spiral galaxy? Who thinks this is an elliptical galaxy? Great, so there you are. You guys are now <laughs> as good as most astronomers at this task. And so uh, people are really good at doing this. People are really good at um, understanding very fuzzy questions like this, questions that are hard for computers to understand. Um, so what we need to do to understand this question for all those million galaxies is have people look at every single image of those galaxies. A million galaxies as a person to look at that image. Um, and that's a problem because as I said before, if you ask a professor to do this, uh, a professional scientist like Meg, they'll probably do about 100 and then get bored and just decide not to do it anymore. <laughs> if you, it's right a scientific paper to actually publish this, to, to say something meaningful about the universe. You need about 10,000 galaxies at, at most. Um, if you ask a PhD student, like we did, this is Kevin, he was our PhD student, um, we asked him to look at these galaxies, and he looked at about 50,000 of them before he was like, no more, please, no more. We can't look at any more galaxies. Um, but as I said before, we've got we have a million galaxies to look at in the survey. And so how do you go about asking people to do a million galaxies in the survey? Um, and so we came up with this idea that we could ask the amateur astronomy community. And in the UK and, and around the world, there are many, many people who are interested in looking at the night sky through telescopes. So they, they have meetings, they do huge amounts of work uh, to, to take photographs of the night sky to really understand it. And the idea came about that we could ask this community to help us. We could say to the amateur community, and help us understand these galaxies. Um, and so that's what we did. Um, it's not a new idea, by the way. This is a guy called William Herschel, um, who was one of the guys who discovered uh, Uranus the planet. Um, he did the exact same thing. Herschel coordinated a, a massive group of amateur astronomers around this time to help with those discoveries. So it's not by no means a new idea if you look at the amateur community, but we tried to do it with these galaxies. Um, and so we did this. We built a website called Galaxy Zoo. And it was very, very simple. This is now about five or six years old, which is why it looks quite old compared to the internet today. But it was a very simple website where we'd show a photograph of a galaxy and do what I just did with you guys, say, is it elliptical or is it a spirally galaxy? And people would just click on one of these buttons and that would be it. 
And we thought that over maybe five or six years, um, we'd go through those million galaxies. The amateur community would help us understand those million galaxies, and we'd get a nice and deep flow result out of it. Um, that's not what happened. Uh, what happened was we got some press. Um, so in the UK, BBC News is like the biggest news organization that we have. And we got a story on BBC News saying scientists seek galaxy hunter help. Um, and it became really popular. We got not only the amateur community, but lots of other people involved. In fact, on the second day, we were the second most emailed story on BBC News. We were only beating garlic may cut cow flatulence, so a story about you know cows being smelly. Um, and we were only beat by man flies to wedding a year early, which is hard to beat. That's a good story, right? Man comes to his wedding a year early, it's hard to beat. Um, and so that's what happened. And, and this is a, this is one of the few graphs I'm going to show, um, which is just showing how how many galaxies we were doing every hour after lunch. So this number up here is the number of galaxies that people were seeing. This is the number of hours after lunch. Um, you see this little bump here, and then it goes quiet again. That's because we got so busy that the servers that we had for our computers just stopped working. We had too many people, we were too popular, and we broke our servers. But then gradually, as you see here, it should be going up and up and up. Um, after about 12 hours, every hour we were doing 10,000 galaxies, which is about enough to publish a paper. So every hour we were doing about enough to publish a scientific paper about galaxies. After only 20, uh, 42 hours, we were doing the same amount of work that Kevin, the PhD student, had done in one month. So every hour we were doing as much work as Kevin had done in one month. Um, Kevin was a little bit upset about this. He was like, I spent a month of my life doing something that could be done in an hour, but you know, he was happy not to look at any more galaxies, so he was okay. Um, and really to give you an idea of how much capacity might be out there, um, we can look at something like Angry Birds. Have you guys all played Angry Birds? Yeah, yeah I've played it quite a lot as well. It's, it's a really addictive game. You throw birds across the computer screen. It's fantastic. Um, there was this really lovely infographic that somebody made about Angry Birds. And it's got some really good statistics on here. Uh, but my favorite statistic is down here, um, where it says that every day, just give you an idea, every single day, 200 million minutes worth of Angry Birds is played. So if you took all the games of Angry Birds that are played in one day, and you played them not with every day around the world, but one person, it would take them 200 million minutes to do the same number of Angry Birds playing as the entire world in one day. That's basically one hour, every hour, about 16 years worth of Angry Birds is played which is crazy, right? So what if we could get even a small number of these people doing citizen science, doing stuff online to help with scientific discovery and scientific inquiry? That would be a huge impact. We could do many, many, many thousands of these galaxies, or millions of billions of these galaxies, and really help us get through this. My other favorite statistic on this is that um, in angry birds, people have thrown about 100 billion birds across the screen. That's quite a lot. And there's only about 100 billion birds on the Earth. So there's, there's been more birds thrown than <laughs> angry birds that actually exist as birds on the planet Earth, which is a terrifying statistic. That's not very good at all. And it works. We, we were able to publish a scientific paper off of this. This is the first of about 60 papers that we published um, about Galaxy Zoo. Um, we published um, a, a whole bunch of these, and a lot more people have taken the results that we've produced and done more science with them. And so it really is producing real science, which is, is huge for us. That's our whole goal, is to make real science happen, to do real discovery with people who help us out. Um, we credit everybody who helps us out. So all the citizen scientists who help us out, we give them credit for the scientific work that they do. That's very hard when you've got millions of people around the world. But what we tend to do is um, produce things like this. So this is a picture of a galaxy. But if we play this video, you'll see that actually it's made up of the names of all the different out on the project. And so everybody's name is in there. We, we put, put this up and people were spending a long time trying to find their name in this galaxy. Um, but we did things like this to credit everybody who helps us out um, with the project. We also had something else that happened. So not only were people looking at these galaxies and answering the questions we were asking them to answer, but we created a, an internet forum as well. So this was a place where people could come and chat about the project, talk to each other, um, get to know each other, talk about the science. And we thought we put it there because we thought people might like it for no other reason, really. But very quickly, people started spotting things like this on the website. So every so often, they'd see a picture of a galaxy uh, which would have something that looked like this in it. And they thought that was a little bit strange. And they started collecting together these images of, of these tiny little green dots. They started referring to them as green peas because they were very small and, and compact. Um, and they started gathering them together. Um, you can see here, this is one of the forum threads where they begin to put them together and collect them. 
Um, after a while, they started getting really curious about these objects, and they started doing this. They started pulling away and getting the scientific data about the galaxy. And this is something we would never have expected. They started going away and getting the spectrum, which is a measure of the light from the galaxy. And they noticed that all these galaxies have this massive big spike um, here. They didn't know what that meant. They didn't know the significance of that. But they said, look, this is something interesting, because all these galaxies have this exact same spike here. Uh, they came to the science team. They told us about this. And it turns out that what they've done is they discovered an entire new class of galaxies that nobody had known about before. And the reason nobody had known about them before is because they were so small that the computers, the automated methods for finding galaxies, thought they were stars. They thought they were so small and compact that they were stars. And so they misclassified them. And so the great thing about citizen science is that you get not only all the science you want to do out of it, but serendipitous discoveries like this, things that we never knew were there. Because people are looking at the images and people are good at thinking that's a little bit strange, we can get completely new discoveries like this out of that, which is amazing. Um, this is where they're starting to talk about it with the Google Deep thing. And again, this is the scientific paper where they discovered the project. And a couple of the authors in this paper are actually the citizen scientists, the people who helped them discover it. So they're now published scientists because they were helping us out um, with no scientific background. Here we go. We've built a new version of the forum. It's called Talk, which you guys can explore about just now, which is aimed at trying to make those discoveries as easy as possible. And so we're you know, allowing people to collect together objects like we did before and really talk about them. I won't talk about too much. Um, but we're also trying to help people make these discoveries by building things like this, which are tools that allow people to analyze the data in more detail. And if we've got a bit more time, we're going to be able to have a look at this and show how you might be able to use that in classroom to really understand more about what's happening. Um, we also did some fun things where people started collecting together galaxies that look like letters. So this one looks like a T, an H, an I, and an S. And so we've now got a font that we can write out words and the images of galaxies online. And so people started doing some really creative, interesting things. Since Galaxy Zoom, we've actually expanded a lot. So over the past five or six years, we've built about 30-ish projects. And um, we started out mostly with space-based projects, which you can see up here. But we've also done some projects about climate change, about the humanities, about biology. Um, we've got projects about whale song, um, listening to whales and their song in the ocean, and trying to match them up with each other. We've got projects about the Serengeti, looking at animals in Serengeti, which is really addictive. Um, some projects about cancer research, and some projects about uh, genetics and that kind of thing. So we've really expanded this idea out to lots and lots of different fields. So any any problem where scientists have a huge amount of data and need people to look at it rather than computers, we we built websites to help them try and do that and help them try and do more scientific research. We've now we just reached about a month ago a million people around the world. So there's now over a million people who have helped us out with these projects. It's a huge number. Um, and we've done about we published about 60 scientific um, based on this work. So it's been really going well, and we're really excited about where this is going to go next. Um, I wanted to give you guys, um, you guys on here? Open it, you can. Uh, okay. So I wanted to give you guys an idea of what this looks like just now. Um, so hopefully this loads. Yeah, so this is actually in real time what's happening on this universe just now. So every time something comes along the bottom here, that's another person looking at something. Um, and every time you see a dot here in the world, that's somebody looking at something in real time just now. Um, so it's a little bit quiet because of a lot of viewers still see. Um, but you can see here, these are people now looking at something online and telling us about it, which is really quite cool. And this is what they're looking at at the bottom. So right now, every single minute, we're doing about 114 times as much work as one person can do. Which means that every um, few days, we do almost a year's worth of, of person work. So I also just want to show up this scale. Um, uh, these are some of the projects we'll be building. So this is the cancer research one. This is Planet 4 that Meg's going to talk about a little bit later on. Um, this is the, the newest version of Galaxy 2. And this is the snapshot of Serengeti website, the one about animals in the Serengeti, which is going to be super more today. Um, okay, this is the interface looks like. It's very simple. Um, so this is, as I said before, we just reached our millionth classification, our millionth, sorry, our millionth person um, joining our platform. So one million people around the world. This shows you where they're all from. And you can see that one of the things that we're very good at is we're very good at Western um, countries, uh, English-speaking countries. So the UK, most of Europe, um, America, they're all great. But this side of the, the, the page looks quite dark. And so um, we really want to get better at, at getting more people 
um, from this side of the world on, online and doing projects. And we're, we're trying to do that in a number of ways. Um, the biggest way is that we launched um, a, a translations project. So um, what we've been trying to do is, is not only ask people to help us classify these images, understand the images, but help us translate the websites into different languages. So anybody can come onto this website here, and we can pick a project, we can pick a language, like this, for example, um, so you speak share, and they can help us translate all the different text on the page to allow us to bring these citizen science projects to places around the world. And a few of the people here today have helped me, I think we translated Kazu um, And so we've got our original Galaxy Zoo in, I think this is Italian. Uh, this is Chinese. <laughs> this is. This is my character. I don't know nothing about this. <laughs> uh, this is Spanish, and we even have um, Welsh, which is a, a British dialect that's not spoken by very many people, and a few other ones as well. And so, really, why, one of the reasons we're here today is to really um, tell you guys about what we're doing, but also to help to ask you guys to help us to spread the words about what we're doing and get as many people involved as possible. Because we really want to make this a global um, uh, project and get everybody around the world helping us out to understand science. So that's all. So I think the next thing on the list is to try out the